Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be reviewing the teething toys that I have and recommending which of those that work best and then after that, I will be sharing my reasons on why I didn't purchase others that are already in the market. Believe it or not, this pacifier acts as a teether. I constantly find my baby chewing on it and not just on the teeth but on the other side too where there's this little piece jutting out. She would fit her little finger in the hole and hold it to her mouth as she nibble and grind on it. So with the pacifier clip attached to it, you probably don't need any other teethers if your baby is fine with just this one. But I have to caution about letting your baby continue with pacifiers as they grow older as it would affect the development of your teeth. This functions a lot like most links, which is that it can be linked to attach to a stroller or a car seat handle and even attach a toy to it. It's colorful and has different textures, which makes it a great teething toy. However, I find that some of the letters have bigger gaps and the letters would fall apart if pulled. Even though I may not use this to attach toys, it could still work as a teething toy and I could eventually teach her her letters using it in the future. This one has a fun shape of a hand, and instead of water, it contains gel that you could put in the fridge so that it's cool on baby's gums. Other than that, it has different textures on both sides, just like any other teether. I find that this is not too thick, which means it can fit in baby's mouth. However, it is a little heavy, so you might want to make sure your baby can handle its weight. Similar to other teething toys of this nature, this teether toy contains liquid inside which you can put in the fridge to chill it and it would soothe baby's gums as they chew on it. It has round edges with different textures to stimulate the gums and provide easy grip. However, some parts of it might be too thick to fit in baby's mouth. The one thing that I want to caution you about is that it is heavy, so if your baby doesn't have a good grip or is not strong enough to lift it, it might fall in your baby's face. It is recommended for baby's age 0 to 36 months, but I'd recommend maybe introducing this to them when they are much older, like 6 months and above. The Very Hungry Caterpillar is a very popular character. The shape of the toy makes it easy for baby to hold. Its body is made of different colorful cloth materials that has different textures and makes crinkly noises when squeezed. The tail part where the teether is, is made of BPA-free rubbery material and has two different textures to soothe the gums. What I don't like about this toy though is that the ears and legs of the caterpillar can get a little raggedy and I find myself having to trim away the fibers. Also, I can't just toss this in a washing machine to have it clean. It is recommended to just wipe it clean with a damp cloth. But what matters most is that my baby enjoys this toy very much, so I kept it around. These links are also Ezri's favorite, even now she is still playing with them. It's colorful, has many different textures on them and acts as a teething toy. It's made of hard plastic and is BPA free. You can snap it onto any handlebar like on a stroller or seat belt and it would be accessible to the baby. You could even use it to clip a toy to it. This is one of the most useful toys to have and one that I can include easily in my diaper bag without taking much room. Winkle is a teething and rattle toy made by the Manhattan Toy Company and has won many awards. Its colorful loops are made of PU tubing, which means it does not contain any BPA or PVC, so it's safe for the baby to chew on. The big loops are easy for baby to hold onto and turn or shake as they work their motor skills. If you have a toy tether or strap, you could easily attach it to the stroller, car seat or wherever the baby may be. The only downside to this toy I would say is that the loops can get in the way and if the baby is slibating a lot, it smears all over the baby's face. This could sometimes lead to a rash if the baby has sensitive skin.
This teething toy is Ezri's number one favorite. At first I was a little skeptical because I thought she would be able to chew off the bristles and accidentally swallowing them. But I didn't have to worry because it is made of quality silicone and I did try pulling on the bristles really hard. It didn't seem they would tear. It's bendable and fits in baby's hands. The folded peels at the side acts as a handle which it can grip easily or you could even use a pacifier clip to clip it to your baby's bibs or clothes. And the bonus is, it also trains a baby to brush their teeth or at least familiarize themselves with the feel of a toothbrush in their mouth. This grapple that looks like an apple is mostly a toy tether. Its three tethers can loop around a toy so that it prevents it from falling over when the baby is at the high chair. It has a strong suction cup for its base where you can stick it onto the tray. And then this leaf over here can be used to link more toys. If you have the links I mentioned, you can snap it on and attach anything you want. If not, you can leave it as it is and it could be a teething toy like how my baby used it as. Just be careful not to put it too close to your baby as the narrow end here does easily go into the baby's mouth but it's rounded so it wouldn't seriously injure your baby. If you want to take it with you, you can secure it to the stroller or your diaper bag. Now if you only need to tether one toy, you can hide the unused tethers inside the grapple. Now if you don't want to use the grapple or links to attach your teething toys, you could use a pacifier clip such as this one. If the toy is light enough, you could easily secure the toy to the strap of your stroller or car seat or even to your baby's bib. I mostly attach her pacifier or the baby banana. If you want to attach the heavier teething toys, PB&J has a toy saver strap that is specifically made to secure toys. Now that you've heard my review on the teething toys that I have, I wanted to share with you some of the reasons why I didn't get some of the teething toys you didn't see here in my video. Um, now it is just my opinion so you don't have to go with what I think, just be sure to gauge how your baby is around a teething toy. Okay, since I didn't buy the teething toys I'm about to mention, I will quickly show you pictures of the ones I mean. There are many different brands that make teething toys that resemble keys. I didn't want to get this because it looks like our car keys and house keys that we have and I didn't want her thinking that she could play with them. I've heard of an instance when the parent's child was playing with the car keys while he was in the car and the parent got locked out. So to avoid situations like that, I decided to skip this. At one time, I had wanted to get this but I changed my mind in the end because it would have slipped off my baby's hands frequently and also it might encourage her to bite on her nails as she gets older. For the sassy terry teether, you're supposed to put ice cube into the cloth part and it would soothe the baby's gums. However, I wasn't sure if I wanted my baby to bite on something as hard as an ice cube and it could get messy, her clothes or bib could get wet very fast. The shape of the fruit on this teether concerned me because she was going to be having this in her mouth and she's going to be constantly biting on it. I didn't want it to affect the development of her teeth or gums. Besides, the regular pacifier is good enough. Bandana teethers are more expensive than regular bibs. This one I'm holding right now costs $4 per piece. My baby slides it a lot, so I would need to replace the bibs frequently, and that means I would need to buy a lot of these kind of bibs, which could get really expensive. These teethers can be worn by the parent like a necklace and bracelet. I didn't want to get this kind of teether because I don't normally wear jewelry and I also sweat a lot, and that's going to get transferred into my baby's mouth if I use it. This is a popular toy that has won awards, but people have found black mold inside the body when they cut it open. This probably happened because of the trapped water during washing over time. So rather than risk this, I decided to skip it. Snuggle or blanket teethers like this one can be a great comfort, but it could also prove to be a smothering hazard. 
Unless I'm with her all the time, I didn't want to risk it, so I decided to skip this one too. Letting my baby chew on cloth books with teethers could be another bad habit later on that I want to avoid. What if she decides to move on to chewing on corners of board books to get some relief? I'd rather not have her develop that habit. So that's all I have to say about the teething toys. I hope it was informative for you. Let me know what are some of your fa baby's favorite teething toys in the comment section below. If you like this video, do hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, do consider subscribing to my channel. Bye!